in our lives. Some of you, you are going to feel the power of God come on you like a fire. When you sense that, it's God's glory. Some of you, you feel it like electricity going all over your body. It's all right. That's God's power. If you reach a stage and you just find yourself, you can't sit on that chair, you can't stand, the glory of the Lord. Sometimes the human body cannot handle that kind of glory. But you know, it's a blessing. Amen. You get blessed when that kind of presence is in operation. The Lord God is going to heal us. He's going to touch us. And God Almighty is going to fill us with wisdom. Even as it was with Shedlach, Mesek, and Abednego, when God made them ten times wiser than the wise men in Babylon, God is going to cause his wisdom to abound in our hearts. Genesis chapter number 18, verse 1. Genesis 18, verse 1. Then the Lord appeared to him by the terrific trees of Mamre, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them. Praise the Lord. This is the greatest book ever on the earth. There are different books addressing various topics. But this one, this is God speaking to the human beings. This book was given to people. This book is not Catholic. This book is not Muslim. This book is not Pentecostal. This book is not Baptist. This is God is one. And when he speaks through this book, every human being to whom this word cometh, has equal opportunity like anybody else to act on it. It does not matter where you are, whether you are in Europe, whether you are in Africa, whether you are in the United States of America. It doesn't matter about your ethnicity. As far as God is concerned, when God looks at you, at you he sees his image. Every human being was made in the image of God. 
everyone, whether the Chinese, whether he's in here, all everywhere in Japan, God sees his image. This book. Thank God we have this book. Thank God we have the Bible. There are places where they are trying their best to get hands on this book. So that they may read it the same way you are reading it. And thank God for the United States of America. Thank God for this country. And thank God for a number of those who were God-fearing, who came here in obedience to the Lord to get this nation to begun. Now, in Genesis chapter number 8, verse 1, the Bible says, Then the Lord appeared to him by the terrible priest of Mama. In my Bible, he uses a capital L. He's talking about the Lord God Almighty who created the heaven and earth. It's so interesting that when he introduces him in here, it is as if he's talking to one appeared. And the Bible continues to say, when you continue reading down there, it says, and he was sitting in the door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes. Now, the word lifting, which is applied here, has a lot to do with loyalty. Hope I have pronounced it well, royalty. It, it, it has something to do with kingly, with authority. Now, this word points out that Abraham was peculiar. You know, the Bible says in the book of 1 Peter, 2nd chapter, verse number 9. Somebody go there very quickly. First Peter 2, I'm going to work with you. Somebody has to read and read something as we go on. First Peter 2, 9. How to get him there and read it. For he are a chosen generation. Yes. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise. That's good enough, my sister. Yes. Very interesting words. In, in, yes. in, in this book, it, it starts to kind of explain who I am and who you are. Right. Yes. Right. Now, right. here is talking about those who received Jesus Christ as their personal savior. Yes. Now, there's some kind of royalty, some kind of peculiarity which right. Ibrahim got into. Mm -hmm. And he got it by God's choice. Mm -hmm. the, the, the choice was presented to him. God Presented, he, he said, Abraham, get up, get out from your people, get out from the place you are living in, and I will show you a certain place where we're going right. to. Right. He got him from the former way of happening of things. Yeah. Like you and me, when we received Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, the old things passed away, and right. all things right. became new. Right. That's why the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Right. The old things are passed away, and all things are become new. Right. Now, Abraham obeyed the Lord, and he walked with the Lord. Yes. In fact, the Bible says, because of all this, it was counted to him as righteousness. He ended up in the right standing with God who made heaven and earth. Now, in Genesis 18, they used the word, he lifted his eyes. That word has a lot to do with somebody who has favor. Somebody, now I'm talking about God. Now, when it comes to Ibrahim here, he's not just looking. He lifts his eyes. There's something about him. There's royalty. And the Bible is says here, he lifted his eyes and looked. And behold, we have to see. We have to see him. We have to see God moving. Yes. We have to see God in our midst. Yes. We are looking for him. We have to see him in any place we get in. Let us try to find out where he is. Yes. Extremely important. Yes. And I will explain to you what I'm trying to say. The Bible says he lifted his eyes and looked. Yes. 
And, and behold, three men were standing by him. Because you are dealing with power, because we are dealing with thrones, because we are dealing with authority here, the Bible, there's a way how a Bible introduces the three men. It didn't say in the beginning, and the three men appeared to him. It didn't say that. It says the Lord. But there are three men here. But the Lord is among them. But do you know, the focus is on God Almighty. And one of the things which the Lord wants us to get back in our lives, what we need to get back in our homes, what we need to get back in our seeing, right. is we need to see him beyond everything else we see. Yeah. Yeah. There is a lot of activity. There is a lot of things going on around and everywhere. And if you are not careful, we can let that crowd our sea. Yes. So the Bible says the Lord appeared to him. Now, precious people of God, this is your moment for favor. This is your moment to break through. This is your moment to be what God says you have to be and to get what the Lord says you should have. Amen. Remember, you are peculiar. Yes. You are a chosen generation. Yes. You are a royal priesthood. Yes. This man, Abraham, Abraham was not an Israelite in the beginning. Abraham was not really among the people who worship the Lord God Almighty. Right. God revealed himself to him. The only thing which God requires you is not really how much you know. The point is, can you let him share with you what he knows? Can you let God lead you? Can you? This thing, this is not my power. This is this. When it comes to this, precious people of God, God is almighty. God is all-knowing. He knows everything about your bank account. He knows everything about your children. He knows everything about you. Amen. He is omniscient. He's all-knowing. So we see a language of loyalty. The language in this book is the language of power. Yes. The language in this book is a language of dominion. Yes. You see God saying in Genesis 1.26. Read for us, please. Genesis 1. Try to go with me there. I, 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 I try my best to go because the Lord commands me to get people to read the scriptures. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fishes of the sea. That's enough. Let them have dominion. God understands the word dominion. Dominion over diseases. Dominion over devils and demons. Dominion over all the powers of the enemy. He understands it so well that in Luke 10, 19, he says, Behold, I give you authority. I mean, we are talking about action here. Yes. A Christian was never intended to be a weakling. Yes. The That's church right. of Christ was never meant to be yes. weak. Yes. This right. was not supposed to be a place of confusion. Yes. Right. Come on now. God I expected a believer to believe this book. That's right. That's right. Not part of it. Yes. Right. And thank God, thank we can. Hallelujah. We are a new creation. Yes. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. 